My YouTube channel is pretty much all about Assassin's Creed, and every day I read comments like this. Valhalla is the worst AC made. Valhalla sucked. First of all, Valhalla gameplay really sucks. Thanks for that really valuable input guys, and whilst I can sympathise with some of the comments, I just felt like a lot of people's opinions are really, really unfair. So in today's video, we're going to be looking and reviewing whether it's worth playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla in 2024, and don't worry, I will be keeping everything spoiler free. To start, the world of Assassin's Creed Valhalla is absolutely freaking beautiful. Just like Origins and Odyssey, Ubisoft have pulled out all of the stops to give us amazing scenery and sprawling landscapes that make me regularly stop just to enjoy the view. It also runs at a really high frame rate too, and on my mid-spec PC, I tend to get between 70 to 80 frames per second, with all of the settings at maximum. For PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, you'll be looking at a standard 60 FPS. The actual world too is vast, with the main map being the second largest to Odyssey in the entire franchise, having us travel all over England, Norway and more within the base game, and on top of that we have the three DLCs including Paris, Ireland and different mythical lands. Within this comes many cities, towns and villages which you can access via on foot, horseback and in many cases raid with your ship and crew. Raiding is a big, big part of Valhalla, where you're encouraged, and quite rightly so as a Viking, to raid and pillage different villages and towns throughout the map, and eventually you'll also get to attack cities within the main storyline. To assess and view these locations from a distance, like our recent Assassin's Creed games, you have your trusty bird companion, this time in the form of a raven called Sinan. Whilst you're encouraged to use Sinan right at the beginning of the game, I found myself not using my raven barely even once. The exploration itself is pretty enjoyable too, as not only is there a lot of materials to be stolen and found to grow your home settlement of Ravensthorpe, adding a nice incentive, but also finding all of the weapons, cosmetics and more that are hidden throughout the map. It's also colour coded on the map as to what point you're actually heading towards, so gold points for weapons, armour and resources, or white for in-game events. There is a good deal of puzzles and brain teasers for you to figure out how to enter certain buildings and access this tasty loot too, most of which can be figured out pretty swiftly, so you're not going to feel too antagonised by any hidden loot. On top of all the gear and world events to find, there are religious zealots throughout the game, offering difficult and enjoyable boss battles, and trust me, if their level is much higher than yours, it's worth steering well clear. On top of that, just like in Odyssey, there is legendary animal boss battles too, as well as regular animal hunting, which will give you resources to sell or use to purchase items. Just exploring the game in general feels amazing, whether that's stumbling across our protagonist's original home in Norway, interacting with a local person and helping them on their way, or coming across some tasty loot that you need to fight someone for. The world and game's exploration is easily the best part of this entire game. Now onto the story, which definitely gets a mixed reception for a number of reasons, but largely that is just is incredibly long. For many people this is a positive, and others a negative, with the main storyline clocking in at a massive 70 hours. Without giving too much away, you play as our charming and brutal protagonist Ivor, who you can play with as either female or male, with female Avil being canon, although I opted for male Ivor, who like all assassins comes with a tragic backstory that shapes their character. You travel with your blood brother Sigurd and his partner Ranvi to England to establish your settlement for your Viking peoples, and you do this by travelling to the different regions of England, engaging with the local leaders, completing their quest lines, and then coming back to Ravensthorpe to choose your next area. This can feel somewhat repetitive, which is definitely a fair assessment, although each regional story is really different and you do meet some fantastic characters along the way, such as the crazy Viking Ivor or the likeable and upbeat Saxon Hunwald. The hidden ones are assassin aspects of the game, as it's worth mentioning that Eivor isn't an assassin, he's a viking, is given to us from two characters Batim and Hytham, and unlike Odyssey, you will have a hidden blade which you'll receive at the beginning of the game, and yes, Batim is of course our lead in the latest AC Mirage, so it's definitely useful to know the backstory of him in Valhalla. On the modern day side of things, this continues on from Odyssey and is surprisingly one of the most old school lore heavy AC games. Fans of the original series will find themselves pleasantly surprised at the amount of callbacks and characters you might recognise, although it is centred around my least favourite modern day protagonist Layla Hassan. 
It's definitely worth mentioning that so many of these mainline characters and stories are similar to the two TV shows The Last Kingdom and Vikings, with our lead of male Eivor played by Canute from The Last Kingdom, as well as a bunch of other actors that you may recognise, including this absolute joker from Norsemen. I must say I also found it hilarious how like Cassandra in Odyssey, you can choose for Eivor to let's say interact with a bunch of these side characters which always made for some interesting dialogue and funny moments. There are actually lots of choices within the game and story, although they often don't make much difference to the narrative at all, but I do like having them nonetheless. Without giving too much away, there's also some fantastic mythology elements within the game too, so it's easy for me to say that if you like those shows and you're a fan of Viking mythology, you'll definitely love this game. By the way guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, do be a good assassin and punch that like and subscribe button as it would really help my channel out. Onto the combat and weapons now, which overall, although I have seen mixed opinions on this, is pretty satisfying. You have your standard light attack, heavy attack and parry system, similar to many RPG games, but on top of that, each weapon has a different special attack, and Eivor also has a bunch of abilities that you'll gather through books of knowledge throughout your time in Norway and England. There are still lots of weapons in Valhalla, but nowhere near the amount you'd find in Origins and Odyssey, very much focused on quality over quantity. And within these weapon choices come some absolutely glorious kill animations, making this game probably the most brutal Assassin's Creed game to date. A negative of this is that a lot of the weapons and armours, in general a lot of the strongest ones, are only obtainable via microtransactions, which will definitely leave some people really frustrated. The majority of these cosmetics and weapons too are just so over the top, giving you insane vampire skins or shinobi skins, weapons from the game Destiny, and insane mounts like luminous wolves or metallic lions. While some people won't be bothered by this at all, it does somewhat take you out of your experience of 9th century England. You do however have the option of purchasing these weapons from the most annoying child salesman ever, but this is all dependent on the day or week, and as far as I can tell is totally random. I have been lucky myself to never purchase anything other than the base game and DLCs, and I do almost have every weapon from the store, but I've also played it a lot too, giving me lots of opportunities to purchase everything. The AI you fight, and there are a nice amount of different types of enemies within the game, I will say in classic Ubisoft style aren't really the brightest. It's rare that enemies will attack you at the same time, and unlikely that you'd ever feel that overwhelmed. The best way to tackle your enemies is by parrying or shooting their weak points to drop them into stun mode, when you can then deal out that brutal kill animation. In terms of comparing it to the combat from older games, it's vastly different, which shouldn't surprise you. Not just the abilities you have like being able to fire arrows through walls or jumping 10 feet in the air to smash your enemies, but even some of the armours in this game are utterly insane such as the Fallen Hero armour which drops a pulse bomb whenever you take a single hit. There's a link here by the way if you are interested in knowing how to get that one. None of this by the way is a bad thing, it's just in next to no way like any of the older Assassin's Creed games. One thing I've noticed after putting 450 hours into this game is that once past a certain level, you become incredibly difficult to kill. I'd actually recommend playing on the highest difficulty from the start, as it will make you actually have to use stealth, which we'll talk about now. Stealth and parkour, to me anyway, is what makes a fantastic Assassin's Creed game, and in Valhalla, let's just say it's somewhat lacking. With stealth, you'll find it's largely unnecessary except at the beginning of the game, or if you're playing on the hardest difficulty. There are standard mechanics you'd expect from an AC game, hiding in bushes, hay assassinations, as well as a double assassination, but only with a throwing axe and not a double hidden blade option that we all know and love. There's also the occasional option to interact with the wasted locals to distract the guards, because as we all know, the best way to stay invisible is to stand next to the loudest drunk in the room. And your bows, which I haven't really touched on yet, offer sleep arrows and smoke arrows as well as lots of other abilities to take out your prey with. Personally, I'd say the stealth aspects are actually better than Origins and Odyssey, but there is a lack of opportunity to use them, and the parkour follows the exact same suit. Parkour mechanics are fine, nothing special by any means, and just as on par with our previous two games, although Eivor, as a great big hulking viking, can feel a little slower at times. 
In 9th century England, you have masses of open space, with most of the towns and cities having wide streets and pretty standard rooftops, allowing for very few moments of parkour scattered throughout. Sure, in certain points, there is the occasional zip line for you to enjoy or rope to hoist you up with, but it's nothing like the non-stop parkour of Unity or even Mirage, for example. I appreciate that the location is the location, but it's difficult to slap an Assassin's Creed logo on something with so few parkour and stealth opportunities. One aspect of the game I actually really enjoyed is something they added later called Mastery Challenges, which do offer some satisfying stealth objectives and missions for you to complete, but within the base game, both aspects are largely non-existent. We're nearing our conclusion, but there are some things that haven't fallen into these first four categories, starting with the leveling up system. At first glance, this massive leveling up tree is absolutely terrifying, and honestly, it's rather unnecessary. Throughout the tree, there are important skills that you definitely want to unlock, such as the heavy dual wield ability, allowing you to dual wield giant axes or swords or spears, but there are hundreds of tiny skill points like plus two heavy attack or light attack, which won't make your gameplay feel any different. You do have the option for the game to also assign points if you prefer, rather than attempting to choose a build, and you can also reset all your points too if you wanted to try out different upgrades. The soundtrack, I have to say, is absolutely glorious. Sarah Shackner and Jesper Kidd, who yes, Jesper did create the iconic Ezio's Family song, have mixed modern techniques with ancient instruments, creating beautiful pieces just like this. Take a quick listen. They've also added so many mini-games within Valhalla, Orlog, which is a dice game, which is actually so popular you can now purchase a version to play at home, as well as drinking games, fishing and flighting, which is a bit like 9th century slam poetry. All of this just gives you even more content and a break from the usual stick of chopping off heads. There is, however, no new game plus mode within Valhalla, which is a real shame that they didn't add this in over the three years of adding content to it. They've just actually added this to Mirage, so it's clearly something that they did think about. To conclude, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a fantastic RPG game, but like Origins and Odyssey, it's just not your typical Assassin's Creed experience. The world is vast and beautiful, the exploration is enjoyable, and the combat is pretty satisfying, but the parkour and stealth is relatively useless throughout the game, and the story can feel bloated and repetitive, despite the decent Assassin's Creed lore. This is the best-selling AC game of all time, and it's hard not to understand why, but I'd also add it's probably the least completed AC game of all time too, so its purchase really depends on what sort of experience you're after. And hey, if you're just starting out, then why not watch my next video about the 10 things I wish I knew before starting, and I will catch you legends in the next one. Until then.